morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm more than prepared to answer queries and qu uh, questions concerning the immigration and nationality law this morning. At the same time, I quickly want to pass through the derivative law. You know, I want to go through it. Primary care of the children in the United Kingdom. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Akins. Good morning. Good morning, Kain Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, Jimmy. Maria, Jenny Maria, good morning. Good morning, Favor. Good morning, Daisy Ebony. Good morning to you guys. Good morning as you are coming on board one by one. I want to recognize you. I want to say thank you for coming on my platform. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. It's still the same platform and educative uh, program with regards to whatever is happening in our society, in our country, in our community, in our world at large. This channel will be dealing with issues of such including the law on immigration and nationality law so i am not um i am not caught onto one subject or into one area i have expanded my horizon since i was born onto the planet you know it was when i was in the womb that i was really really tight inside so i don't have space to roam about but as soon as i came out of the womb i have been given the opportunity to excel depending on what and where I want to go and who I want to deal with. So ladies and gentlemen, in a beautiful Monday morning this time around in the United Kingdom, I want to welcome you on board. I want to say thank you for coming on my platform. Uh, Sky is your starting point. If you know what you are doing and you are not watching somebody else's wristwatch to do your business because it would be bad to look at somebody else's time to go into your business. So you must always have your time to do business, to go into anything you want to do in life. Use your own time, ladies and gentlemen. I am using my time here, and it's 21 past 8 in the United Kingdom. I am not copying or following anybody. I am following what God has ordained for me to do. And that's exactly what I am doing until I am tired. But believe me, it takes a while for lawyers like Lawyer Yedun in Nigeria to get tired until they see it waiting you know there are too many big justices of those days that they never retire Ruti me williams until they stop breathing so i cannot see myself retiring from legal work so welcome on board ladies and gentlemen good morning to you beautiful monday morning in the united kingdom the weather is bright and it's not drizzling here in the united kingdom so i want to you know say thank you for coming on my board i want to use this medium to say that when we are coming on this platform, we should prepare our questions, our comments, our everything, depending on the topic, you know, so that we can allow others who cannot comment to see what is happening. Well, I don't know why they can't comment because this is a peaceful one and there's no problem out there. So I don't know why people will say they cannot comment. But I want to applaud you. I want to say congratulations to all of you there for being on this platform. Thank you. Let's crack on. Monday morning, Ishelo Guishe. Shadow Mountain, Ishe, Nile Yoruba. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So let's crack on. The issue about the primary care of EA Nationals, EA children in particular, is a grown concern now, a grown one. So as a result of that, if you are carrying a child with EA passport and you are still one of those mommy or daddy that still want to rely on that child to have your permanent residence in the United Kingdom, you will be deceiving yourself in the end. I am on 0790862240. If you are one of those that are carrying EA child and you are so much assured of by yourself or you are so much, you know, um, confident in what you are saying or what you are doing that you can get a permanent residence with it, you will be deceiving yourself in the first instance. And then the second point I want you to put, I want to put forward again is that if you're lucky enough to have a five-year residence card, which is going to be called derivative, it basically means that 
you are in the UK temporarily and there is no way you can be in the United Kingdom permanently if you are on that particular uh, status. So you will need to understand exactly what that status does and how it is for you. Because if you don't know the meaning of that status, my dears, you might end up being without anything in the end. That status can never lead to permanent residence, unlike those who marry to an EA or those who join their daughters or their sons in the UK, they will be coming under residence card. Of course, they're going to get their permanent residence in the end. But if you are carrying an EA child and that child is carrying an Irish passport, French passport, Spanish passport, you know, a German passport, any European passport that are within the member states um, union, I can reassure you that at the end of the day, you, are, you will end up leaving the United Kingdom for us because it's not going to come to the situation whereby you will be given a permanent residence card. So you need to get it right. There is a case law and a judgment that is saying that EHIC, which means European Insurance Card, is insufficient. You know, European Insurance Card is insufficient for you to rely on in the UK. He's saying, the judgment is saying, although the judgment at the end of the day for a clever lawyer of my standard is contradict itself. Because the judgment is saying that if you are going to be in the United Kingdom permanently, that EHIC card is insufficient for you to rely on. Anyway, anyone who wants to rely on that a child that's carrying a uh, European passport will not be in the United Kingdom permanently anyway. So it appears that the case law is contradicting itself. It appears that that case law is contradicting itself. However, there is another case law that is saying that the proportionality test of it has to be exercised in most cases, you know. So if Mr. Soto so holds a German EHIC card and the court was prepared to proceed on the basis that it was disproportionate to refuse him a right of residence, then you have to look at the difference between the two cases because at the end of the day the court concluded in that case that it was it was wrong to refuse him a residence because he's holding holding the card but there is another case law that is saying yes there is another case law that is saying that ehic card is not sufficient so that means it's in, it's, it's contradicting itself however however at the end of the day I'm going to reassure you to tell you that if your child has European passport and it's the only way for you to make your residence in the UK. Now, the gist of it is that, is that there is no way that document will become permanent. There is no way. That, that no matter what you do, no matter how you go about it, there is no way that that document is going to end up becoming permanent in your hand. The way I will, I will simplify it, the way I will simplify it, if that child was born in the United Kingdom and that child obtained European passport as a result of the mom or the dad holding European uh, citizenship, you have to check how long the mom or the dad has been in the UK for. If the mom or the dad has been in the UK for five years at the birth of that child, the child will be able to register and hold British passport. So in that circumstances, I will be moving away from European card, European situation, and coming under immigration rules. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of people are stingy to themselves, so they don't want to spend money. One thing I know in life is that you spend money to get money. There are some situations that you have to spend money to get money. If you're going to get money and you think you want to go and get it for free, and you fail to, 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 to spend where you're supposed to spend along the line, you're going to lose money that you are going for in the front. Basically, the structure of it that I'm trying to explain here is that Making an application under immigration rules, it costs money because you are going to pay the home office fee of £1,033. You are going to pay the home office national health service charge of £500. You will pay the legal fee also as well, which it depends on the lawyer that you want to use. 
But at the end of the day, a child carrying British passport is guaranteed that you will succeed if you are the sole carer. Even if you are not the sole carer, that you share responsibility with the other parents, you will succeed under that child that holding British passport. But the child holding EA passport is going to be more difficult because in the first instance, the other parent that has EA national, that is an EA national EA passport, still in the UK, exercising treaty rights, enjoying him or herself. So why are you saying that you are the sole carer in that ramification? Why are you saying that the government should um, give you that residence card? So in most cases, those who, the, the child that has both parents will not succeed. You won't succeed under a child that, that, has, has, that have access to both parents. So I will be advising at this particular stage, if you and the father are living together or you and the mom living together, I bet you you should apply for residence card directly instead of, want, you, instead of you wanted to use your, your child. A lot of people want to use their child because they want to avoid all this kind of whatever they want to avoid. But I will not spill it here. But the point here is that it is going to be a waste of time, a waste of effort, a waste of everything if you persistently make an application under a child that holds British, um, hold European passport. Because at the end of the day, it will be that even if you are fortunate that you are granted because the other parent is out of the United Kingdom, his whereabouts is of, cannot be located, then you will be asking for residence card. But then the residence card they are giving you, no recourse to public funds in the first instance. And it's a temporary one, five years, that you have to continue to renew for five years. And as immediately that child turns 18, you will not be able to go ahead on that, a, a, a child carrying European passport if it turns 18 in your hand. Because five, five years, five, five years, five, five years, at the end of the day, you'll be chucked out of the country. So if care is not taken, it will mean that you have to start all over to do your private life application under 20 years rules. Yes, yes, yes. So, it's something that you really, really, really need to understand. Because if you don't understand the logics, the scenario, the, 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 the style of putting it together, the, the, the log, let me, say just, let me just say, use the word logic behind it. If you don't understand the logic behind it, then it becomes an issue. It becomes a major issue that can actually affect all your entitlement in the United Kingdom or all what you have labored for for years. In order not to affect you, then basically what you have to do is to move smoothly away from derivative rights of residence. Some clients are very clever. When the situation started, I knew there was a problem in the home office then, about four or five years ago, even six years ago. I quickly alert all my clients that apply under the derivative um, card. Before they refuse them, I, 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 I told them all of them. I recall them. I recall them and I recall the document back from the home office. And I changed documents to uh, immigration rules immediately. And they were all granted. Some of them are on their third year. Some of them are on their second year. But there is no one on first year anymore under my emblem. The majority of them are either under second or third year. But they were not refused. And many of them are online that can testify to the goodness of God in that, in that aspect. So it is better for you to take advice. When you are clothing, you are buying clothing, you are buying shoes, you are buying jewelry, buying everything. You window shop, you go around and check prices and check uh, quality. If you are one of those like me that like taste, that, fun, that you are fond of quality, you go around and you have your shirts where you buy your quality all the time, regardless of price, because you know when you put it on, people will know the value, they will recognize it, they will know where it comes from. It's the same thing when you are taking advice. You take advice from, if you are not convinced enough, like somebody asked me a question on Saturday, it, it basically means that you were not convinced enough about the, the answer your lawyer gave you. You were not convinced enough, so why, why can't you take advice? Do window shopping elsewhere again and take further consultation before you proceed. I always tell my clients, if they don't believe in me, they should not instruct me. They should instruct someone else that they believe in. 
Because I don't work with somebody who doesn't believe in my capacity. I don't move with people can, who doesn't believe in what I can do. So if you don't believe in me, you don't instruct me. But if you believe in me, within a certain period of time, the paperwork will come out because I will not give advice on document that I know is not going to succeed. So that is period point. So on the EA application, I will be giving advice that if you are still one of that, because I still have one or two people that came for advice lately, possibly a week ago, asking me questions regarding um, derivative. Please don't even bother to go on derivative. Go and get money. And if you're struggling to get money and you have the child has British passport, apply on under fee waiver. You understand? Go under fee waiver. If you go under fee waiver, then you will go through peacefully. Because if you don't have any income to, su to, to, to support yourself, of course you should go under fee waiver. That's the whole idea of this thing. It's more or less like a legal aid. But no, every firm is entitled to make application for, the, for client. This time around, we're not restricted, we're not limited. So if you go under fee waiver, if you don't have income, if you don't have anything, go under fee waiver, make application under fee waiver. But don't forget, anyone who is having, who is going on indefinite leave to remain cannot apply for fee waiver. I said it so many times. So the easiest way, if you want to make application under immigration, under a child, go under immigration rules. Because at the moment, as we are going through this turbulence of Brexit, uh, this uh, transitional period, it's a, it's a big turbulence. And we are, we are really experiencing, what, in fact, what we are experiencing at the moment is uncertainty in our economy. Uncertainty in our economy in the United Kingdom. Things at the moment is not clear. Even me, that I am a lawyer, at the moment it's not even clear anymore where we are now. The negotiation is at the last minute now. The letters are thrown to each other. The debate will take place in Parliament today, whereby they will debate and talk about other stuff there. But you know, economic meltdown is something we need to avoid in our country. Economic meltdown. But I haven't said that regardless of, you need to start thinking of your application now. If you are having a European child, and even, even you that have a European partner there, your job now is to think of what to do. Like I said earlier on or previously in my other videos, if you're living with your partner, don't expect to do cohabiti with European partner anymore because it won't succeed. Don't expect, you know, to do cohabit. Cohabit is a scenario whereby you want to show evidence of two years of living together. In all ramifications, I have to be honest with you, it's not going to succeed. It's not going to succeed. So you've got to know what to do on time. And the only way to go about it is to, is to do consultation. Because if you don't do consultation, you're not going to go far. You know, if you don't do consultation, you're not going to go far at all. So you need to do consultation. I'm on 0790862240. 0790862240. 0790862240. I will only deal with either one. Either one. So I think we should do WhatsApp only. WhatsApp only. 0790862240. WhatsApp only. 0790862240. WhatsApp only. I'm on 0790862240. I am going to deal with WhatsApp only callers. You know, there are heavy load questions that came in yesterday. Different, 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 different questions that I received yesterday. You know, different, different. Different, different questions I received yesterday, but that is the situation, that's the scenario about people that want to make application on as a primary carer, primary carer of an EA, you know, of EA children. If you have EA children, either child or children, and you want to make an application under that child, the onus is on you to demonstrate to the Secretary of State that you met the requirement. But even though you demonstrated at the end of the day, what you have to be wary of is the fact that it's not going to lead to PR. No matter how many times you put in an application, no matter how long you've been doing it, that is not going to lead to PR. So I want to say that when you are doing that application, 
your, your first thinking is advice. We are going to do the transitional period. We're going to come out, you know, but we've got to understand what we are coming out for. You know, we've got to understand. Let me look at some of the questions from this angle. Please like and share, like and share, and let your cook. Kalu said that yes, ma'am, marriage is the safest bet, even in America, Germany, and other places. Yes, the two years is not guaranteed, the two years is not safe. Even a lot of people that do two years, once your EA person pack is or a load, you are doomed. Once your EA person pack is or a load, you are doomed. There will be no retain right of residence when you do two years of living together under European national, there will be no retained right of residence. Or like if there is a marriage certificate, it's a piece of paper, but believe me, it's a document that is important. So whoever have common sense, you should think twice before you leave somebody to altar, to registry, to, to, um, to a marriage ceremony. Because once there is marriage and it is recognized in the highest of the law of that country, whatever properties you have, once you messed up, the other person will have authority we have the audacity to challenge your properties and you will slice it twice even if even if, even that person is most likely to get more than you that have sweat in your life so marriage is not a cracker joke it's not a matter that you can joke with before you go into marriage before you sign document before you agree that you want to do it you've got to think very well a lot of people that are doing marriage that they don't understand the, the challenges behind it you've got to understand it there's a lady that came to me and said to me that all what she has labored for in the uk with her with her previous husband married to, an, to a new man at the end of the day they went to registry they did everything normally but what happened in the end when the marriage failed the lady lose out gallantly because the guy has a bad plan the guy has a bad plan. The plan he had was that at least she has three properties. So he will claim from it. And believe me, he was entitled. Yes, because at the end of the day, the case went to court. And they are, they are husband and wife. So who cares how long you have had it for? So you've got to be careful again. When we talk about the issue of marriage, you really need to think twice. Understand? Because once you lead somebody to altar, once you lead somebody to altar, you exchange rings in, ma in marriage ceremony. Once you exchange rings in marriage ceremony, you're done. You're doomed. If anything go wrong and the person is somebody who has a bad plan or is taking advice from elsewhere, you'll be ruined. Especially if you are the one that has properties or have something to lose, then you are doomed. You are, you'll be destroyed for the rest of your life. Because the person will claim so much from you. So marriage is... It's not a joke when we talk of it, but a lot of people take it on a risk value. Well, if both of you has nothing other than your clothes that you put on, then there is no risk in it. If both of you have nothing when you are going in, then there is no risk in it. Someone like me will never go into marriage again in my lifetime, God forbid. Because the moment you go into a marriage, then you're dead. God forbid. Someone like me will never, never, never go into marriage again. Whatever happens, you will take it on face value. Because if someone of my caliber go into marriage again, and I don't go into somebody, somebody that has something to lose, then I'm dead. Anyway, it's not going anywhere. Anyway, so there is no need to talk about my marriage. But the point here is that you don't go into marriage with somebody that hasn't got anything to lose. So when you are going into marriage and you have worked hard in your life, your previous marriage, whether you are a male or you are female, and you are just taking somebody from nowhere, there is an old man that came to me last time and said that he's almost 70 years old and, she, and he brought a young lady from Nigeria. You know what that guest showed that man? The guest showed that man every charismatic ideology of styles of Omota when they brought her to UK. How do I mean? The man has properties. The man has everything and has money in the bank. What she does is that she'll be asking for his card, bank card, all the time. Uh, Daddy, bring your card. We need to do shopping. She, the daddy thinks that he's in marriage, he's in, a, he's in a relationship with a young person who is servicing him and making him happy. But at the end of the day, what actually happened is that the guest swapped the money from the account. She swapped all the money, took them off. 
because she has gotten her indefinite leave to remain at the time. So all she does is that she go out with her friends and join friends to do parties, to do everything in London here in the United Kingdom. Because Omoju Rolari, they brought her from nowhere to somewhere. So only for her to get to England and see that say, wow, a yellow and be seeing the poor, poor man's bank account and say, oh my God, this is money. And at the end of the day, she swapped the money. She, she took everything. Because she arranged with a, a, a boyfriend. The boyfriend she has is one of those harmonic banner that can make heaven to heart and change it to anything. So they taught her, the, the teacher, they tell her what to do. So they moved the poor man's money from the account. When he came to my office and said, Mrs. Olag Baye, I'm doomed. I died the Kilo Shele, sir. He doesn't want to explain to me. I said, you have come to lawyer, sir. Kilo Shele. Then he now started explaining himself. You know, started explaining explaining himself that he went to Nigeria to go and bring a young lady around 30 something years or 40 or so but Baba is almost 70 but he has worked all his life and it's not that you just want to marry it's his children that are saying that go and remarry you'll be lonely because his wife late wife passed away but they have properties together they have everything that lady swapped that money's pension money everything the man almost collapsed in my office here when it when he came to tell me things you understand so in times of marriage, marriage is good because it's not just a piece of paper. It's a document that can lead you in life. It's a document that can assist you. But before you exchange contracts of marriage with anyone, be sure that both of you are in the same arena. You are in the same realm. You are in the same thing. Otherwise, you cannot hide anything. Because on the day of divorce, there is kind of situation, there's kind of agency we use in England to check everything in your name. Before the divorce uh, dissolution, we proceed to dissolve everything on a financial level. We have to check everything, make sure that everything that you have in your name is within the law. So we, they will bring it to the judge to look at. So the judge will look at it and apportion it, depending on how many children you have among your, between yourself. You understand? It will be a portion in the end. So if you're saying that I have 50 million somewhere, I want to hit it. Even if you have money in Nigeria, they will trace it back. If you have in Dubai, they will trace it back. If you have anywhere, they will trace your account back, trace your money back. You understand? So you just have to play the game smartly. Marriage is beautiful. It's something that is good. But let me tell you, you can only go into it when you are certainly sure of what you are doing. Because if you're not certain, believe me, it's going to be a life of regret. Two or three situations that I have seen in my office that they have come to cry on my shoulder. It happens to a lady, it happens to a man, it happens to a man. You understand? It's difficult to say, okay, this is how we are going to deal with it. This is how we have to go about it. But the only thing I will say is that in a residence card, EA National Family, two years of depend, uh, living together is not working anymore. No, because you sh previously it was put under extended family member. It was put under extended family member, but this time around, it's, it's not even working anymore because of Brexit issue. It's not even going far anymore. So what you have to start thinking is to do marriage. But when you're doing marriage, especially the year person, well, if you're just coming with your bag and you don't have anything in the in, in UK, then you can go into it. But if you have properties, you have everything already. Think twice now. Think twice. So you have to think twice. But if you're just coming with just an ordinary or hand luggage from Europe to live in, in UK, you register for your N9, you get your um, rent, your accommodation, one bedroom, and you open your bank accounts and go and look for your job there, out there, then of course, why not going into it? So both of you will start afresh. Both of you, both of you will start afresh. You know, so it, it's an issue that I really, really would want to. Why can't they marry someone here instead of them going to Nigeria? The devil, you know, is better than you. <laughs> Favor, I don't know. Let them keep going to Nigeria and go and marry there. That's their problem. But all I know is that <laughs> I'm on 07908. Okay, I'll give it to you here. 07908-628-240. WhatsApp only. Okay, that's the number I'm on now. So I'm on that number, and it's WhatsApp only, so that we can allow overseas to get in as well. You know, so that is the number, 0790. Oh my God, that's a mistake. So 
sorry, 07908 I want to correct that, WhatsApp only. Yes. So it's on 0790862240. The previous one is not um, it's not right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Or um, Osamu say, Osamu say that's fine. Anytime. My office number, my office is not open now. My office will be open at nine thirty. Then the telephone number in the office is 0208-309-8808. 0208-309-8808. That is the telephone number for my office. Quinty, they want women they can treat like dormant and feel they can treat like dormant and feel threatened. That woman here. The women here are career women. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many career women that are crying out there for man now? <laughs> Today is not the day for that topic, believe me. Do you know how many career women that are crying for just somebody to just be with them, to just for them to just hide under them? Don't worry for that one. In London here, I know many ladies that left it too late. They have never married before, but they left it too late, I can assure you, and they are paying for it now. So we'll talk about that topic in another time, but not for today's date. I'm on 0790862240, It's easy for me if you don't ask questions anyway, so you should know that. It's so so easier for me. If you don't ask me a question, it means you know if I don't know what. It means I don't have to talk too much. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Morning to you, my dear. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, Okay. It's on the air whenever you're talking. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I I've got two keys. Okay, I'm with you. I've got two things. We are British, but I've got my paper. But the, the, mother, the mother always tells me that it's looking for a way to destroy the paper. So what advice can you give me? You have two British citizens. Yeah. And, they, they, and you got your status to them. Can you know how your device is going into my ears? Okay. Yes. You Lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it. Okay. You, you let me reiterate. Let me reiterate again. You have two UK citizen, mm -hmm. and you got your status under those children. Yes, ma'am. But their mom is threatening you that you, she's going to destroy your paper. Yes. Yeah, what did What did you do? You are just yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. You are talking as if you are my children when they were younger. They've never done anything in their life wrong. Yeah, wait, wait. You know that sometimes you get your paper through a woman, I shall not be happy. But since she has no way, or you've got it already, I guess, you know, so she'll tell you she wants to destroy the paper. Ask her why. If you destroy it, I told her I'm going to go to any length if she destroy my paper. You will go to so where? Any length. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take her. I'll take her to court. Mm -hmm. You understand? She said there's nothing I can do. So for her not to destroy it, it took me six years before I could get the paper. And is this your is this your first one? Huh? Is this your first um, paper? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, um, I know, I 
I know home office. Home office is aware of situation going on around uh, among you between you guys now in terms of relationship experts. You know they know what is going on now, so they are not answering. They are not quick or quicker. She used the word to 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 revoke anymore. You know. That is a different scenario. That is a different scenario. In your case, because your status was granted under your children, yeah. you should be thinking of applying to court to have the responsibility order. Okay, but if she's telling me that I take her to court, that she tell the court that I see there, that is nothing the court can do. Call, call who? If I go to court, uh -huh. I should tell them that I see my children often. <laughs> Let me, people are comment, they are putting their comments there straight away and they are saying that you should tell the truth. Now, let me tell you one thing. Before she can threaten you that, are you doing all your necessary responsibility in the house? Maintainers mostly are will use English. Yeah, I do everything. I do everything. You maintain her. I maintain her. How can I you? Won't give her, I, I, I won't give her access. Listen, listen. I, I'm, I'm a woman. How, how can a woman be? How can a woman be daft when a man is maintaining you and then be misbehaving? The devil, you know, is better than the one you don't know. Mama, 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 I want you to understand it that if you give woman everything in life, she tell you you're not doing anything. That's why she don't understand. They will still have something. To, they will still have something to ask for. In a situation where she's telling you that, uh, I don't even know how much you're collecting your salary. How can she, how can she expect to know your salary? I don't know my husband's salary. What kind of what kind of insult is that? Are you serious? They are saying here that you should say the truth that Ogada is God, though. Oh. <laughs> she is the one collecting the children money. You know the percentage that online at the moment are saying, oh God, please say the truth. Women are not crazy as you men think. Yeah, Love it? Okay. Yeah, it's because they're not my shoe. They're my shoe. They will know what I'm talking about. Okay, anyway, let's let's put junk apart. I want to ask a question, Bibli, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Yes. Is it possible, because she's not said again that, that she will call the home office and tell that she doesn't want to have paper for the keys so that for me not to renew? I didn't know the first. I was when I collected all the paper during the nationalization that cost me almost one. Oh, hold on, hold on a minute. The, the children are carrying British passports, yeah. Now, yeah, I did everything. Yeah, she I can't. Call, she can't. She can't do she, that now. She wants to call. Uh, uh, Mabino, can she go to call office? Okay? My children are not having paper now. That until they get ten to ten years before she wants to apply for the paper. It's not possible. She's, say, are you okay? She's only trusting you. No, it's not possible. Uh, because I, I don't know who she's getting advice from. Hmm. Because whenever I get it from, she give me another attitude. Some women are just like she, that. Mrs. Adiola Shuet on Algeria, at least this is a woman talking here. Some women are just like that. Mrs. Adiola Shuet on Algeria is saying that. Because I know this is a woman. Definitely, this you is... Know, you know, what she said, she's going to tell them that she don't. And I say, are you going to give me the money I used to collect the paper for them? Are you going to give it to my uh, one below me? That's okay, no. Uh -huh. The first thing is I'll take it to court. <laughs> I guess you, man. So I, I just don't want the advice before I know the next step. The first thing you have to do from experience, yeah, I'll now be giving that advice straight away now. It's for you to ensure that you have taken this case to court so that you have a kind of a shared responsibility with her. 
Because at the moment, automatically, since you are not husband and wife, let me tell everybody online, everybody online there, listen now and listen correctly. The woman will have the parental responsibility. So far, there is no marriage certificate and you guys are not living together. That lady, that woman is in charge. Without prejudice, without being partial, is the truth. Automatic assumption. That is automatic. Now, if you are a man and you think that you need to have that shared responsibility with the woman, what you have to do is to take a bold step. You have to take a bold step to have that shared responsibility. Without you taking a bold step, you are going nowhere. Because automatically, in any scenario like that, the woman will have the parental responsibility unless there is marriage certificate. Marriage certificate will give you 50-50 equal share on those children in the house because both of you are married and you are living together. So it gives you equal share. But there is, if there is no marriage certificate and you are not living together, then there is no 50-50. You have to take a bold step to apply to court to have that order in place. No, 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 no. Any guy that is out, that is out there listening to us, don't do cash giving on the child responsibility on maintenance anymore. The mom will definitely have a bank account. Transfer money from bank to bank. And by this, you will have evidence. Ensure that you have time to visit that child and make sure that they know you in your child's school. If you are a proper father, you should find time. You know, you should not say work, 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 work alone. And then want her to revert to the mom when you want when you now need your paper for renewal or make application to the home office. You cannot revert to your to, to the baby's mom at that time. You need to be involved in the child's life from day one. And by this, you you will have a say. My brother, the only advice I can give you is that take a bold step before before drastic uh, uh, action is taken. Uh, uh, before she take dr drastic action. You should take a bold step. Take case to call and, and, and make application to have shared responsibility. You will tell who? The court. That I see the children every day. Eh, but them every day. That is when the application starts. Where, that's when you put the application in. The judge wants to hear from you before they grant it. This is an application that needs to be granted as well. You know? Somebody is asking me, Rosemary Abiola Oga, are you supporting her financially? Yeah, he said it earlier on. He said he gives money and gives more than what she's even asking for. You understand? So, yeah, he said it. He said he gives money. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson is saying that the caller is, should vary his status to another route. How is, she, how is he going to vary his status to another route? If he has not clocked 20 years in the UK and he has two cheap British uh, citizens in the UK, he will only be able to rely on those children for now. So I cannot see any way out of this unless you are asking him to go, to go from from pan to fire again, which you, are not, you and I know the meaning of that. So that could, that could be only be an alternative from from pan to fire. And if, That's why I'm making sure, making sure I'm, I'm, I'm almost seeing the children all the time. Somebody is saying that I'm sure Kola is not telling the truth. She's not serious. Maybe <laughs> it's because she's on my issue. Oh God, the home office needs proof. We are on 07908 So my, 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 my person, I think my advice would be for you to take the bold step to make parental responsibility or that go to court and have the shared responsibility. Because if you have that document in place and there's evidence that you are maintaining them, home office will not touch your status. If, even if the lady wants the, the, uh, the evidence. I have the evidence. But have you, the need, evidence. You, you need that document because I've seen it. Well, the woman should just come out. Um, my mom be the man. But the woman should just tell the man and say, oh, I wish I can destroy your paper. Yeah, because she's, she's regretting it. She's regretting yeah, that. Yeah, I she's. I use all my, I, I, I use all my money. Yes, yeah, so because we, we did, I got the paper. I Hold on. I know Anne, Anne's name is a lady's name. Anne, Anne is a, she's a lady. She said, oh, God, take them out 
and always take pictures with them as well. So she's saying that check your children, yeah, check your children now. I, I, I more than, I more than pictures. Mrs. Mrs. Adeshiaton, Mrs. Adeshiaton, like you is saying that she's she she knows someone that's going through the same same situation. So this man is telling the truth. God bless her. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Adeshiaton, like you she's online at the moment. She says she knows someone that is going through the same situation. So you are not lying. Tony Abosse says, let him show evidence before we can believe him. <laughs> anyway, my brother, that's the situation. Let's leave the line for others to come in. All right, sir. Yeah? Bye, bye. Okay, my dear. I'm sorry. We are on 07908 He needs to see you on one-to-one. -one. Rosemary Abiola, exactly. Exactly. Nothing can be done online in this manner other than for us to just talk about things and tell you. But believe me, the way forward will be to take sheer responsibility and through court is the only arena. Court is the father, is the, is the one that will make judgment for two of you and simplify the problem. You know, so you need to find a way to, to, to take matter to court, you know. Oga attend parents' day. What's that day or sagi? Okay. Make sure you have evidence you can show home office anytime they ask for it. Okay. Good. We're on zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero. We're on zero seven nine zero eight zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero. That is the number we are on now. Zero seven nine zero eight. 628240. We are on 07908 628240. So if you want to call me, the line is open for you to use. You know, 07908 628240. 07908 628240. The line is open for you to make use of at any time. 07908 628240. Hello. Hello. If we are going to have only London call, UK, United Kingdom call, I am going to release the right number, the right number for you guys because it seems people are struggling to connect with their Wi-Fi. Okay, lots of faces are calling in. Hello. Hello. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hello, dear. Hi. Good morning. Morning to you, dear. Good They can, they can still forgive you you can still forgive be forgiven but you're not supposed to break the rules and for those who are out there you see the two years doesn't say that you should be coming in every six six months mm -mm. it doesn't it doesn't actually say that because you're only permitted to travel into uk as a visitor once in a year not twice three times no the whole, the whole idea of having multiple visa is to avoid queuing again so that's the reason why, because you have you have had six months, so they give you two years, they give you five years, they give you ten years. But it doesn't say you should be coming to UK frequently, because anyone comes to UK frequently is not a visitor anymore. But you will be, you should be all right. Since you are going back home to make application correctly, and you are coming under European family permit, when are you going? I haven't read the I haven't read the document the, the the big dossier at the moment I have not seen what is going to happen after March 2019. You understand? Although you so said I you are. To a lawyer, she was saying that because I've been coming in since 2014, because I 
came in for my master's and then six months, six months. No, you have, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about your coming back. I'm talking about the Brexit. But because it's an Irish national, you should be all right. Yes. You should. You. you should be all right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes. Okay, dear. Bye. We're on zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero WhatsApp only. The number is pinned down here, 07908 We have the number here, you know, for those who want to call the number. We have the number there pinned down. Hello? Hello, good morning. Sir. Morning to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> even me, I can't hear him. Even even me, I can't hear you, and they are complaining that they can't hear you. Even me, I'm, okay. even me, I'm struggling. Was there, a, was there a genuine marriage certificate? Yes, ma'am. The traditional, everything was genuine. Tradi traditional, we had the pictures. No, we're not oh, hold on, hold on. For you to have a successful application for marriage, yeah, it has to be with Church of England or registry here in the UK. In the event that it's not one of those two, then you have to do one from registry in Nigeria. Were you both there? They said, no, we are not both there. That's prosy now, now that, but that is prosy. Yeah, we well, didn't want to do that because I remember you once said it's a no go area that prosy is not accepted. So we didn't do that one. We never did that one. So we, we were trying to go through the three years that we've been living together for three years plus. So that was the route that we, we filed the application through. What is your question? Now, my question now is that they sent a mail to us. They sent the mail. We have to be coming to sign. They have to be coming to sign. So because they probably, they, 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 they probably not. What would I say? I don't know. I don't want to say too much out here, but um, it does. It probably means that they're not convinced enough. Or you know, uh, possibly, just... possibly you were supposed to, to report to them previously and you refused to attend. Uh, were you served previously? Have you been served before? Uh, yes, I've been served. Yeah, I've been served. That is it now. Uh, that is the reason why you were asked to come back again. Okay. Because you have scounded. It's the only reason why. There's no any other reason. Because the decision has not been made on your application. Fine. But the point here is that you have been previously served. And you, okay. 
and you fail to acknowledge it. But, but ma, as it is now, is it possible that because one of the reasons why I was I was unable to go then is because my partner has got health challenges. She's got a serious health challenges, and I, I don't, I cannot be by you. Have you obtained have you obtained medical notes from the GP to say that this is your situation? If you obtain medical notes, you have to serve crowding. But regardless of if you serve crowding, crowding will, if we serve home office rather, they will still insist that you should come. Because even somebody that is dying that's supposed to sign on, they insist that she should come. Not to now talk not to now talk that it's not you, it's your partner that is feeling is not feeling well. Fatima Undoro said that if she has social worker, you need a letter to confirm that. From social? Yes. You need a letter from social worker to say that that lady, she's somewhere. And you are the one, to, and you are a primary carer. Yeah. Thank you, Fatima. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. I'm on zero seven now. Already we've got almost how many mixed calls already. <laughs> I'm on zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero. I am looking closely on the issue of EA primary care. You know, EA children primary care. That's what we looked at. You know, and basically, it's all about entitlement. You know, EA primary care. Hello. Yeah, good morning to you. Morning, dear. Uh, I've been watching your program and it's so, so interesting. I I just want to seek uh, your advice regarding my situation. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I, uh, I'll just give you the date as uh, the way I, I got married on the 24th of uh, February 2014. I adored Dana on the 23rd. I got married to a Polish lady. I, I had a daughter on the uh, 23rd of November 2014. My resident card uh, for EEA2 was granted on the 23rd of January 2015. Um, for some reason, the marriage didn't work out, so I left, uh, I left her on the 30th of August 2015. Uh, that, that, um, that was actually a year and six months and um we were having issues we don't we don't have any financial issues because i i always i always send her money through her bank account every friday and um but she was restricting me from seeing my daughter so i took her to court for a child arrangement order which was granted in my favor because what i asked uh they gave they gave that to me um that was on the 20th of December 2018. On the 20th of December 2017, sorry. So uh, the decree the decree was pronounced on the 20th of this, uh, November 2018. I, I just wish to know uh, the way forward. Do I need to apply for, um, uh, am I eligible for or permanent, or I need to retain my right first. You're asking almost one, two, three, four questions at one go. You got married, marriage is no longer working. Have you divorced completely? Have you dissolved your marriage? Uh, the decree in EC was pronounced on the 20th of November. What about, ab what about absolute? Without absolute, there is no dissolve. There is no dissolution of marriage. Okay. Absolute will uh, will be she will be eligible to apply for absolute in for 
the street of 45 days. So after that, what what will be the way forward? If she go, if she if she, ha if she has received the uh, absolute, absolute is absolute is final. She needs to get the absolute first. Without receiving absolute, it's impossible to dissolve it. It's impossible to have a retain right. So you need absolute first. Yes, not, uh, yes, because if you have only spent three years or three and a half years, you need to get one and a half years more. So you have to apply for another five years to complete your five years on the residence card before you can now go in for permanent residence. Okay, because um, on the 24th of February 2019 will be exactly five years since we got married. So uh, this is uh, before we before we trigger the divorce, I would say four and a half years. Do you want to come and take advice? Because I cannot get all the gist completely, so I don't want to give a, a false advice. You understand? So I think you should okay. find time, because your case is a complex one. So as such, I would advise that you take consultation instead of taking it over the phone like this. You understand? Oh, okay. Yes. All right, that's fine. That's fine. But so a retain uh, right of uh, residence is when you have obtained your absolute uh, the divorce document. If you have not obtained the divorce okay. absolute, you can't do retain right of residence. You know, and if you have completed your five years before the divorce came out, then you can go in for your permanent residence under retained right of residence. Because until divorce is is granted, uh, marriage has not been dissolved. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Okay, thank so you that so is much. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, uh, day. You too. Thank you. Bye. We've got huge missed calls already. Okay, somebody said I have a friend that's got two and a half years and they are sending him a reminding notice to come and sign on. They have made mistake. They didn't know that he's been granted. So you can just tell them that I've got my status and tell them that he's not coming anymore for signing on. That's as simple as that. Hello? Hello, good morning, Ma. Morning to you, dear. On 10 years. No, ma. No, ma. Permanent residence. I have already, I have already got my permanent residence. And what does the child have? I, I need to. The, ch the child has the a. The child doesn't have anything. No. The no, it's you, that, it's you that we do it alone. Him. It's you that we do it alone. Okay, because I went to the nationality checking service and the man told me that I need the father's signature on the form. And I don't know. They're not asking. They're not asking for documents anyway. Since you have a permanent residence, okay. So they're not asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so if much. He, if it's in his life, if you guys are living together, let him sign. But if you're not living together, you don't have to. It's not compulsory. I have I have done mm -hmm. many that that didn't get the consent from the other person. So it depends. Oh. Okay. Because they're saying that if he doesn't sign, then I can write a letter. Yeah, but he's living with you now, isn't it? No, we're not living together, ma. No, ma. If you're, if you're not living together and he's still willing to sign the document, why not? But if you're not li living together, it means that you're a single parent, isn't it? Yes, yes, ma. But he also, you know, he also wants to use his son, you know, to apply. Yeah, but that doesn't affect him now when the, when the passport is granted. Thank you, ma. Thank mm. you, ma. That's okay. I don't have a problem in signing and using the son. I don't have a problem in it. Mm. Thank you, ma. All right. Thank you, ma. Bye-bye. Caller, please, volume. You cannot hear you, or caller. <laughs> Thank you, ma. God bless you, Richly. You are doing a great job. Thank you, Anna. Uh, it's so dear. Thank you. Good morning. God Almighty will reward you abundantly for all that you do. Thank you, Mrs. Kubrat Bailey. Bless you. 
Mr. Kenny Adewale, thank you. You are so kindly, honestly speaking, mommy. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Morning to you. Morning. You can't speak to me through the office. Office is not open until 9.30 and I don't speak to anybody until possibly from 10 o'clock. Okay, can I give you a hint a little? But if it's not going to be long, it is going to be long, go and book your consultation in the office. No, it's not going to be long. Go ahead, quickly. You made application under your father. Yeah? Yes. And what happened to it? Yes. What happened they to it? They refused it saying that they put his they refused saying that they put his bank statement and my own. If why well, if you made if you put an application under your father, it basically means that you're saying that your father is maintaining you, isn't it? Exactly. So his bank, his bank statement, his pay slips, his employment document is crucial. He's, yes. He's receiving pension, and I, I have, um, I got his pension paper from Spain, and um, the bank statement that I'm supposed to get is from Nigeria. So I don't know if that one is going to be okay. What is bank statement from Nigeria do to this application? What would it do? It doesn't have his seventy five. And he came into the UK for one year. His job is one year now in the UK. So he doesn't have anything to do with UK account, but he has um, accounts in Spain. He has accounts so, in Nigeria. So, so let's, talk, let, let's talk this. Where's your father? My father is in the UK now. So is, ex is he exercising to you right if he's a pensioner? Yes, he's taking this exercising to you right. He took um, health and um, this thing from these health companies if you want to use nigerian bank statements what where, where has it got income in nigeria yes he has income in nigeria how did he get that those income was he a retired person in nigeria yes he has business and he has houses he rents out yeah that is one journey your father will have to demonstrate also that you are living with him here and it's meant he has been maintaining you back there in Nigeria and before you moved to UK. So uh, we, we sent all those things for me. We sent everything. We okay. sent um, the the, the, the um, Western Union transfer you usually do to, for me mm -hmm. when I was in Nigeria. We sent all those things. So it's because the bank statement wasn't there, that's why it was refused. Was that the only reason? Yes. It's bank statement. And they said the the insurance, the health insurance he took that we didn't put space sleep. Then we put his health insurance document that we didn't put payments received. Hmm. Yes. I think I think to be honest with you, my, my head is a bit tight. If you have time. I think you should be taking consultation. Come to the office. Let's have a look. Oh, okay, I will call you at 10 o'clock so that I can book consultation. No, no, you will call office, not me. You will call office and then they will book your appointment. Okay, no problem. Yeah. No problem. Okay? All right, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. You see, those, those opportunities are there, but you got to know how to use them. It's not something you can just... Um, Hello. Hello, good morning. Morning to you, dear. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Morning, my dear. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I just want to ask a question about registration of the child. Yeah, my my son is 10, and I want to register him. But one of the problems is that when I check the red book, it doesn't have the 
one here is missing there because that year is not in school and I don't know if I take him to GP or not. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are the mom, isn't it? You are his mom. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So you should be able to account for your child's growth in the UK from birth. From the day one he came out of your womb till 10 years, you should be able to explain. So you should be getting a letter from the GP. Possibly tell them to give you, to print out and give you the list of things that you, the list of your um, attendance. Visit. Uh -huh. Visit to the surgery. You understand? If child has not been taken away from United Kingdom throughout his lifespan yeah. to 10 years, get letter from school, letter from midwife, red book, everything. So I don't think that should be a big deal. Yeah, and again, Ma, the new form now, it has a um, father's um, consent there that the, his father has to sign, and I don't live with his father. Yeah, you made a letter. Write a letter that you are not living with him. Okay. I'm not living with him, but we still get contact. At, at the, uh, mm -hmm. If you get contact, do. If you, if, you, if, you, if you tell him to sign it, he will sign for his child. Yeah, if you have contact with him, tell him to come and sign form that you want to obtain British passport for the child. It's both of you, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's that shouldn't be a problem. If you cut, if you have contact, tell him to come and sign. Okay, yes. Thank you, ma'am. You're most welcome. Bye yeah, bye. It's still issues about how to regularize your status. We are zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero zero seven nine zero eight six two eight two four zero. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Morning to you. Please, I want to, yes, ma'am. I want to ask advice how should I get my marriage certificate from home office. My first application with them, we submit the marriage certificate, we birth certificate, everything. But we failed with that uh, application and we have to go for another one. So when we got the paper thing, the lawyer that did the application to us, ask for the passport, not for all the documents. So since 2011, we just got the final one last year, December. So and I wrote them sometimes this year to send my marriage certificate and the birth certificate for my daughter. And I sent the letter with the registered the post. They didn't respond to me. They didn't reply my letter. So uh, what can I do to get the marriage certificate and the birth certificate for my daughter? If you said if you said document that was issued in the United Kingdom, obtain the certified no, copy. Oh, that's gonna be an issue. Hmm. I need the original marriage certificate. It's gonna be difficult. Unless just write back to the home office and say, listen, you're holding my document. Can I have my marriage certificate and my daughter's birth certificate back from your archive? You know, if it's ma if it's British document, you will have obtained a certified copy in the UK straight away, easy piece. But Nigerian and document. You will respond to the letter for the fact that I did it a recorded delivery. It was not I sent to the right department. You I should you, you should be writing department that send you document. I I use the address that that lawyer used to get the passport because it's in Liverpool. She wrote the letter to them. So it's the same address that I use to write. I'm afraid that's the only advice I can give you. Write to the, the address that concerns, have the address that granted your status. Is it the first one? Because the first one we did is different from the second one we did. The one that the granted you now? The one that granted you your, your status? That is the only advice I can give you. I'm afraid I have to move on to the next person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, if you are asking me questions, please don't ask me questions on documents submitted to the Home Office and you are asking it, they haven't sent it back to you. That doesn't help the situation here. 
the, the question you'll be asking me is the problem about your status in the UK, how, what you can do how to resolve it, not about document that has been granted already, and you will be wasting time while you'll be wasting my time at the same time. There are loads of people on queue here that want to come in and ask questions. So let's try to be to, to, to be civil and give them the opportunity as well. If you have been granted, I know if you have been granted, please think about those that have not been granted. Good morning to you, my dear. Yes, good morning. Um, I have a question for you, if possible. Um, my ex-husband, he's a non-EU citizen. I am the EU citizen. And he's trying every possible, with every possible means to uh, seek retain residence through the children. Um, he doesn't have custody. I have full custody. He has visitation twice a week. But he's trying to frame up stories, um, trying to get custody. Is he going to succeed to have the retained residence, in your opinion? Was there a marriage certificate between two of you? Yes, we are divorced, legally divorced now since May 2018. And you got married when? We got married in 2014, back in Italy. And, he you... didn't, and we didn't live in the UK for two years straight. We didn't. So you lived for one year? We lived together under the same roof as a married couple for... Uh, do you, do, so you, you've, you've got the straight divorce now. You've got the document. Come again, sorry. You have you have the divorce document now. Yeah. So they so they have dissolved your marriage then officially. The court has dissolved it. Officially, yes, yes, May two thousand and eighteen. And he wants to go in for a retained right of residence. Yes, he does. Well, he's going to need your pay slips. And your ID card? I didn't provide. I didn't provide because I, I'm not obliged to do so. I know. What about your pay slips? <laughs> no, I didn't give him nothing. So I, I'm not obliged to do so. So I don't think he's able to get the retain right at the moment. All right. I don't he's think tried so. hard with the children, actually. As I said, he tried. He took me to court, stating that I'm, I wasn't the carer. My, my teenage son was, which my teenage wasn't even living here, uh, and he um, and all his allegation got dismissed. I am, um, as I said, um, the children have residence with me now, and he tried the 50-50, mm. but um, no. <laughs> nah, if 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 um, because you are in the UK, you are active. There are ch you have children. So it's going to be a bit difficult without your assistance because he will need your pay slip to show that you are still exercising treaty no. rights in the UK, you know, to date. I do actually, I actually do, but... But um, you need evidence. I, the marriage, I know, the marriage didn't last even the three years required by law because he mm. was sent out the family home like so few months he, after. He, he does need evidence to corroborate your, to corroborate that claim. If he hasn't got your pay slips or letter to show that you are working in the UK currently, it was going to be a bit difficult for that application to succeed anyway. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you're most, you. You're most you. welcome. Bye. Thank you, dear. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There is so much happening with regards to getting status in the United Kingdom. Please, lo please lower your device. Lower your device. Good, good morning to you. Yeah, hi. Good morning, ma'am. Morning to you, dear. Morning. Yeah. Um, I've got a few questions to ask, Well, First of all, I want to thank you so much because I'm one of many people who has benefited from your program directly or indirectly. Thank you. Uh, I remember a few months ago, I was watching your program and a few people were like, giving testimony and I pray to God I want to be one of them who give testimony and I'm so happy today to say I've got my um, leave to remain I've got five years with the help of God and my wife she's the EU national and my children and you are British so um, the question is I've got five years I want to know what will be the next step after the five years did you get it under your wife and you have marriage certificate? No, we 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 have a, a religious no, marriage. 
Now, nothing must happen, please. Nothing must happen between two of you before that end of five years. If not, you won't be able to claim it. You won't be able to get your permanent okay. residence. Can I suggest that if you are, you have children together, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, can can you children. can you not lead this situation to registry and and and, 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 and regularize it properly? Do it properly. Okay. Because God forbid, God forbid. I said it. God forbid. Okay. You know, if tomorrow she change her mind, you're going to be stranded. Is to, is, is to go through marriage. Yes, I think you should get marriage certificate. Okay, okay. Go, uh, go, to the, go to the registry and put it before them that you want to book appointment, you want to have a date for marriage uh, interview so that they can give you date and time. Okay. Yeah. That's the first part. And then after, after that five years, am I still going to get another five years? No, or you will get permanent no. residence. What did you say they have? The, the two of my youngest children, they've got British passport. Mm -hmm. But my first one, no, they didn't branch it. Was your first one born here? Yeah, they're all born here. How, and how old is he? He's four. Your first child is four? Yeah. Where, what about the status of the mom? What has mom got? Um, she's the has she been here for five years? She's been here nearly ten years. Yeah, so she should be able to register her child. They said that because she, when uh, any child born within five years of her exercising her treaty right would not be allowed. They, 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 they can't say that. They can say that. You understand? They can say that, but if she has been, she, if she has been here for five years, or even more than five years, and she has permanent residence, which she's supposed to have applied for, that child will be able to register. She'll be able to register that child. She might not be able to obtain it automatically, like applying for British passport directly, but she will be able to register that child. That I am certain. Um, she hasn't got uh, permanent residence. But that is very important because we are coming out, so you guys are supposed to obtain all those things. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Hello? 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 Morning. Morning to you, dear. Morning to you. When you call me, lower your device and go straight to the point. Aroloja, I haven't got time to play around the music in the morning time. Understand? I don't have it. All the luxury time. You know, I don't have it. But Mishure Falabura Soledayo, thank you. Love you too. Hello. Hello. Hello, dear. Thank you, man. Thank you, dear. Thank you. God will continue to be with you. He will give you more strength, Amen. more love. Amen. Well done, man. Thank you. Thank you. Whenever I wish you. Yes. Man. Yes. Thank you. I save your name, damn as well. Thank you. All right. Yes, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. All thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. She doesn't need anything from me, but that's how she always calls to embrace my work. 
May God continue to embrace you wherever you are and your children as well. So let's crack on quickly because I am going to roll it to end shortly. But I just want you to know that we spoke about the primary care of the AA children and we, we note that it doesn't lead to permanent residence. You know, it doesn't lead to office is open. Our office number is open now 0208. 309-8808 0208-309-8808 If you're lucky, you can still get an appointment to see me today, but I know my today is really filled up. Once I come off now, 10 o'clock, I will start the advice. But you can still call to see whether you will get time on 0208-309-8808 Office line is open now. I can tell, I can see it from here that they are picking calls now. Anyway, hello? Hello. Good morning, ma. Good morning to you. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, mommy, I just want to say thank you very much for your time and your effort towards what you are enlightening us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. To know what is going on in the country, I really appreciate. It. Thank you. Um, ma, my question is, um, I got married to my e husband in 2013, and we had a son together. Okay. So and. Uh, in 2015, I got to realize that he got family back in Nigeria, which I was not aware of it. So, and he was uh, bringing the family from Nigeria without me even knowing. Mm -hmm. So, and the family came to London here, yeah, and they were living here in UK without me also not knowing. Hmm. And, uh, but he brought the wife through student visa and the kids through his nationality. So I didn't know because he doesn't stay here, he traveled and coming and walking. So um, for me, he was like a, a dream husband to me, you know. So at the time I got to find out all this, this is when I went to Nigeria and I came back, I, I found out what was going on. So with the son we had together, he refused to um, apply it for him. Uh, his uh, nationality here so because when we are i have to like apply my five years because i was granted uh, five years so at the time i was asking him to let's go to register his son but he was like touching it so i never knew that uh because he has already applied the status for the one back home hmm. and that was why he was touching my one here hmm. so when the whole thing came out i just broke down Hmm. I really broke down. So at this moment now, I'm confused. I hmm. don't know what to do. Hmm. I'm just hoping in God. Hmm. So I don't know what to do now. How my son will get his... Uh, I now apply for my son, but they've given my son the same document that I have. Hmm. So I don't know what else. Where, where will I start from? Because my five years supposed to uh, expire next year. But they revoke it and reapply it. Is he holding, um, what passport is he holding? Niger a British passport or European passport? Is it's what? European passport. He's holding European passport. It's a European passport. Hmm. And you have residence card already? Yes, ma'am. Was there a marriage certificate between two of you? Yes, now we got married here in UK. How did he manage to bring in those ones that he hasn't got married certificate on? Uh, according to the information here, because he's a citizen, he went and applied for uh, the kids in Nigeria mm. through his embassy. Yes. And so he brought the kids and then And then bring the mom in under student visa. Yes, ma'am. So the mom will be able to apply under those children. Yes. And, and he, 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 the wife he even gave birth and uh, because when I got a letter, I was really shocked, like, uh, uh, congratulations, so because I wasn't expecting, so I, I, it's just like a, 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 a scars coming out from from the sun or something like that, that's how I can describe my nightmare at the moment now. 
now the question I want to ask you is that those children that he brought in, he brought in rather, he's got those children before your marriage. He got them before my marriage. Yes, but he didn't tell you. He didn't tell me. That's where he got it wrong. Why hide it? Why he didn't? It? That is where he got it wrong. He knew this thing would come out one day. Eh? That is the only way he has got it wrong. Because you were having it in mind now that you were marrying somebody, marrying somebody who hasn't got kids before. Isn't it? Yes. Exactly. Yes, How old was he at the time of your marriage? Uh, he was about 48. I won't believe him that he hasn't got kids before. I would not have believed him if I were you. I would have done my research before I go for it. A 40-year-old man not with kids is so impossible in this technology of ours, in this modern day of our living. It's so impossible. He would have got one or two outside. You know, I wouldn't have believed him. I mean, when they come in, like, they, they, they use the sweet word or something. I don't know. I don't who, you, know who, you, who use the sweet word? Who, you, who use the sweet word? Do you understand what I'm saying? Who use the sweet word? Because at the end of the day now, it comes to you, it, it's something that came to you as a shock, surprise. But looking at it from the scenario from day one, it wasn't even a shock thing because it's there. It's supposed to, all it's supposed to do is to disclose it. And for a 40-year-old man, you should have expected of that nature to happen. Believe me. Then, like, you know, tell, I mean, you need to learn lesson from this. You shouldn't be doing anything sweet talk, sweet talk all the time. You understand? You shouldn't because it won't work, you know. You know, he won't. You know, so um, what advice do you need from my end? Because you need his passport. Yes, ma'am. You need his passport. You need his support to say that you are living together. You need evidence of his work in the UK, proof of address together, everything. You need it together. You see those children that he brought in, the home office will brought it up when you are going for your permanent residence. Okay. What? One way or another, that thing will come up. Okay. I bet should I do? Should I accept? Uh, or would I? Because definitely, I'm not going to accept me. Uh, by, by that world. Well, uh, let me tell you. Let Let me tell you one thing. When When I was growing, my parents taught me that you don't start showing off your shoulder when you haven't got what you wanted. Yes. Okay, so. The, the, the proverb should be a bit clearer to you than others that are out there that's not a concern there. You understand? Put your head down. Okay, Pretend as if you're not smart. Okay, Get what you want before you start showing your color, if there is any to show, if there is a need to show. He lies to you, accept it, but don't catch him now. Pretend as if they were not, it wasn't a problem. Lead him to the situation where he can assist you to get your permanent residence. Okay, After which you okay. will not come back and bounce back on him. Okay, because that was a heavy lie that destroyed family, destroy everything. He's got them already. And it's not that you are the one that's going to give him status. He's the one that will give you status. So he's a prolific liar. Okay, he's okay. a prolific liar. He's a smart liar. He thinks he's smart, but he's not even smart. But he's a prolific. When we say prolific, it means that he's a constant liar because he's been doing it for ages. He's been doing it for a long time. So you can lie on anything. For example, if you see it, if you see daylight, he can say it's night light. When it's obvious that it's daylight. So do not even show any sign now, even if he's listening to me on the on, on my program. I really cannot be bothered on that. I'm giving you advice because you are the one that asks advice from me. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Put your head yes, down. And get your permanent residence before you start showing in the roots. Okay, ma'am. And the wife, uh, well, through that, the wife, because the letter they sent that uh, it's like he was is applying uh, to be a British citizen, and through the the daughter, who, the daughter, the woman had for him, will get his uh, status. So, uh, and I rejected. Oh. Hold on, because you cannot apply to do British citizenship now if you're on a residence card. No, not me. Not me. He applied for uh, the residence blue card that they are. They okay, are they, from, the, from the home office. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've granted him that one. So since we, he has been with me for six years, 
so and uh, to him according to what he said that he's entitled to to get a British passport. But he mustn't go for a British passport now because if he does go for a British passport now it's going to affect your permanent residence. Did you, have you, did you, both of you have child together? Do you have child together? Yeah, we have the son together. Has he applied for his son? He didn't. Ah, he's got a game, he's a, he's a game player. That child is supposed to have British passport. That's what you, you are going to rely on in case your plan B, in case if anything go wrong with plan A. That should be your plan B. So there's a problem between two of you. Yeah, okay. there is a problem between two of you that you need to really sit down and sort out. But uh, I applied for my daughter. They've given my daughter the same thing that I got the five years. Uh, uh, That's not the point. You and your daughter can be stuck if that guy is not supporting you. The question is the child that you was born here, and it's his child. Have you applied? Has, has he applied for that child to get a British passport? No. You need that now. You need that. So you need to you need to go through that. That's what you need. You know, you definitely okay. need that. So if I apply now that he has also put in for his daughter, will it affect my son? No, if he if they are, if he's got twenty children, he can take all the twenty children to the registry and by registration and apply for them if they are his children. So there's nothing that fights anybody as long as they are his. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Thank you and God bless you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I've got only five minutes to leave this platform now for today's uh, advice. I've got only five minutes, only five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I recognize you. Mr. Badmos, thank you so, so much. Allah body Badmos, as you came in, I can see you straight away with the love and like button. God bless you, my good brother. I don't have to know you guys one-on-one, one one, but I appreciate you for your love button. Please like and share. You never know when you are saving life through this platform. It is not about prayer, 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 prayer that you save life or about, or about hospital, 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 NHS. You know, you save life through this arena. When you pass this message around, they share it, they listen, and they say, oh my God, I am going through the same problem here. So this is the situation, solution to the problem. Yes, it is a solution to the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, go and book appointment on 0208. 309 8008 309 8008 office for appointment office number for appointment you know so that is the office number for appointment you know. So zero two zero eight three zero nine double eight zero eight is the office. <laughs> Idris Mubarak legendary K. I enjoy doing it, believe me. I really enjoy it. You know, when you are working and you enjoy doing what you are doing, it's really good. So it shows that as a lawyer I can be a financial advisor, I can be an accountant, because we studied everything. I can be a speaker, public speaking person, I can be a journalist, I can be an advocate of call, I can be a, a writer, I can be a contract sub, I can be a contractor, I can be anything, because we studied everything inside law. And don't forget, I'm a UK qualified lawyer. So I learned everything. I enjoy speaking in public, and I've been doing it since I was younger. My mother placed me in the forefront of speaking in the public when I was in school. Don't forget that she was a head teacher. So I'm a teacher than me. So I have trained to talk in the public since I've been growing. You know, they've seen my potential and they put me out there. So I've been talking on the school assembly when I was growing. I've been talking in the public. I've been addressing issues. And I have responsibilities in the public. I've been, you know, dealing with public since I've been growing. So it helps me. And going into legal profession, it also expands me more. So I can talk, I can talk without having any problem, without, you know, as long as I am not talking to step on toes, you know. And if I don't have something to say, I shut my mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to go now. I can't pick calls anymore. Ishe lo gun share. Ishe lo mantan. Ishe.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I drove my heart to all of you. Thank you for your support. Abike Oba, thank you. Yes, UK qualified that. Thank you. To all of you there, Woremon, Ashiro, to all, all of you. In fact, there's no way I can mention names anymore. It's more than what you can mention. So I want to appreciate all of you. Thank you. To your Sibeti Odunuga, how are you doing, my dear? Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. I want to appreciate you. It's too many to, to, to call. Too, too many to mention. So I appreciate you. And I say, go into this new week with the blessing of God that no man can surpass. With the blessing of God that no man can take away from you. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Jade lo sinu ayeko lo ma lo go re bolo nse ni mo lati odi ohun kaye ma se pe ogo wa lo mo wa lowo ko ma ye ma se ti wa subu ka ma se se ese mi ka ma se se wa may the good spirit of the lord almighty god continue to abide between for both of us all of us throughout this week and next and any time let the blood of jesus drop upon us all the time and let's focus and know what we are doing thank you bless you all Thank you for your support at all times. Without you, it wouldn't be possible to use platform to talk. One can't be talking. If you don't have people watching you, listening to you, it's a waste of time. So thank you, and I appreciate all of you. Blessing of God continue to be upon you, your household. You are covered. Go into the new week and do good. And let you know, I to tell you, I will 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 tell you, what others have not done in your family, start it off in your family. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. Excel. Let the spirit of love continue to dominate your life to direct your path. Excel, excel. Thank you, Lord, for the good week and the new week that we have just started today. Thank you, thank you. I have reason to appreciate God all the time because I wake up, I find myself healthy, okay, not in the hands of evil, not falling apart. You know, kids are okay, the family is okay. So I want to say thank you, God. Thank you for my business, my life, my professional career. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you that are listening to me, my fans, my family, my friends. Thank you. Blood of Jesus, I covered you. Thank you. Excel. It is only in Christ that you can do things. Without Christ, it will be a waste of time. So always cover yourself before you leave your house. Blood of Jesus. And always know how to read your Psalms all the time. Do not get carried away. And if you are Muslim out there, you have to be a clean Muslim, a clear Muslim with a clean heart. You understand? I want to collaborate with some imam to come and talk in the, in the mosque very soon. So will you church pastors, when you are ready, I am ready for you, but the imams are ready better than you, so I want to go into the mosque and go and talk there about the situation in our community and how we can get it right. So we will be moving forward. We are not getting stuck in one place. So I want to appreciate you. Have a blessed day, blessed week. Enjoy your Monday, beautiful weather here in the United Kingdom. Thank you. I love you.